With his 30-year resume of award-winning performances and box office smashes, it's easy to believe Leonardo DiCaprio when he exclaims, I'm the king of the world! But Leo struggled in the beginning, just like everyone else. Just the other night I was sleeping under a bridge, and now here I am on the grandest ship in the world having champagne with you fine people. <laughs> DiCaprio had just appeared in two episodes of 1989's The New Lassie when he auditioned for Ponyboy in the Outsiders series. DiCaprio lost the role to J.R. Ferguson and instead played Kid Fighting Scout in the pilot. It's a simple choice. Do you want to share victory with your friends or enjoy defeat by yourself? Several years later, Leo was in line for the son of David Hasselhoff's character in Baywatch, but Hasselhoff scrapped the casting because he thought he was too old to play DiCaprio's dad. He finally found television success on Growing Pains, and from that was offered the lead of Max in Hocus Pocus. DiCaprio turned down the Disney movie, though, and instead made the indie What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Gilbert. Hmm? So you're Gilbert. Because I'm Gilbert. As that movie shined through award season, earning DiCaprio his first Oscar and Golden Globe nominations, an adaptation of Jim Carroll's The Basketball Diaries was struggling through multiple delays, with Matt Dillon, Eric Stoltz, Anthony Michael Hall, and Stephen Dorff all considered to star. River Phoenix once took The Basketball Diaries book out in an interview and declared he wanted to play Carroll, but DiCaprio landed the part after Phoenix passed away. All right, so you made one. Good deal. You made one shot. Make enough. Phoenix's death also left a vacancy in Interview with the Vampire that DiCaprio and Steven Dorff were considered for, but Christian Slater ended up with the part. Around that time, Leo met with director Joel Schumacher to play Robin in Batman Forever, but lost out to Chris O'Donnell. Soon after, though, he beat out O'Donnell, Matthew McConaughey, Brad Pitt, Christian Bale, Macaulay Culkin, and others for a little movie called Titanic. You could almost pass for a gentleman. Almost. In taking on James Cameron's opus, however, DiCaprio had to pass on the lead in Boogie Nights, which instead went to his Basketball Diaries co-star, Mark Wahlberg. A year later, DiCaprio turned down Edward Norton's part in Primal Fear, launching a long list of roles he would decline throughout his career that includes Michael Rappaport's in Higher Learning, Keanu Reeves in The Matrix, Nick Stahl's in Sin City, Adrian Grenier's in Harvard Man, Christoph Waltz's in Inglorious Bastards, Ewan McGregor's in Angels and Demons, Michael Fassbender's in Steve Jobs, and Michael Pitt's in The Dreamers, which he passed on to make The Aviator. My name depends on this picture. If it doesn't work, I'm back to Houston with my tail between my legs making goddamn drill bits for the rest of my life. At one point, DiCaprio was attached to star in an Oliver Stone version of American Psycho, but when the project stalled and a new director came on, Leo left to make The Beach and Christian Bale took over. Isn't this a coincidence? An actor as in demand as DiCaprio is typically considered for most of the top parts every year, and it eventually comes down to who's available. Some of the roles he was considered for include Jim Caviezel's role in The Thin Red Line, Jake Gyllenhaal's in Jarhead, Jude Law's in Cold Mountain, Toby Maguire's in Spider-Man, Hayden Christensen's in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, and Matt Damon's in The Talented Mr. Ripley. Speaking of Damon, DiCaprio was originally cast in The Good Shepherd, but had to drop out to film The Departed, which also starred Damon. Go figure. What are you waiting for, honestly? I mean, do you want him to chop me up and feed me to the poor? Is that what you guys want? Coming off a four-year break after his Oscar-winning turn in The Revenant, DiCaprio returns to the big screen in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a role director Quentin Tarantino courted him for. And why not? He is the king of the world, after all. They're gonna need to send in the National Guard a f***ing SWAT team, because I ain't going nowhere! 